Coming up on CBS 7 News at 6, those closest to a Midland police officer killed in Monday night's murder-suicide are telling his story. And free Wi-Fi may be coming to an entire West Texas town. We'll tell you why. And some West Texas employees decided to donate their holiday bonuses to those in need. CBS 7 News at 6 starts right now. More details emerge about the life of Chad Simpson, a sergeant with the Midland Police Department, killed in Monday night's murder-suicide. CBS 7's Sarah Strackhouse joins us now from Hobbs, New Mexico, after sitting down with a reporter from the Hobbs Sun to talk about her interview with Simpson's father. Sarah? We sat down with Sonia Petrosky, who spoke to Chad's father, Keith. He says he couldn't understand why this could have happened. Like his dad said yesterday, everybody's trying to judge them off of 10 seconds of their life. His dad was just, he was very brave. He was very, um, you know, he wanted, he wanted everybody to know who his, his son was. Petrosky spoke to Chad's father, Keith, who says Chad was an Iraqi war veteran with the 82nd Airborne Division. He said they never talked about his time in the service. He never wanted to talk about it. Uh, but he said that he knows that there was some bad things that he saw. It's the sense that he was, they were really happy. What happened, I don't know if we'll ever know. I don't know if you ever will know. Just months before Simpson died, he lost his partner from the force, a canine named Sid. Totally distraught, totally heartbroken whenever he had to put him down um, because of hip dysplasia. And um, that was something that just really hit him, hit him pretty hard, and that was only within the, pretty recently. And still, why remains the question on the minds of those who grew up with him? He was real sweet, very nice fellow. There hasn't been a single bad thing that we've heard about Sandra or Chad. Midland police say that Sandra died officially at 1 a.m. this morning. Make sure to stay with CBS 7 and CBS7.com as we continue to keep you updated. For now, in Hobbs, New Mexico, Sarah Strackhouse, CBS 7 News. Sarah, thank you. Two Denver City men are dead after two wrecks in Gaines County in two days. A driver of a Dodge Ram was on State Highway 214 near Seminole Wednesday morning when he tried passing another truck. That's according to the Department of Public Safety. The driver veered into the opposite lane and crashed into a Ford Escape that was driven by Christopher Clayton of Denver City. Clayton died on the scene. Then on Tuesday, Jack Ray Savage, also from Denver City, died when his Mustang rolled over on County Road 120. Two Oklahoma men are behind bars after an altercation on the side of Interstate 20 Tuesday. Dylan Alton Helms and William Rex Beckham were traveling down I-20. When their vehicle broke down, they called for a friend in Odessa to help. According to the Howard County Sheriff's Office, the friend couldn't get a vehicle started and refused to give the men a ride to Oklahoma. That's when one of the men displayed a gun and beat up that Odessa man. Helms is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Beckham's charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, and un lawful possession of a firearm by a felon. He also had an outstanding warrant. An Odessa babysitter has been indicted by a grand jury for injuring a child. Megan Worley is accused of slapping a four-year-old child so hard earlier this year that his nose bled. That's according to the affidavit. The mother of the child reported that her son had bruises on his face after being assaulted by Worley. She now faces injury to a child charges, which is a third degree felony. Could we see some rain in the Permian Basin this evening? Let's get an update right now. Weather specialist Daryl Ward joins us from the Pinpoint Weather Center with a look at what we can expect later tonight. Daryl? Yeah, good afternoon. And yeah, we are, to put it in the, in the quick summary, going to see a chance of rain, especially after midnight tonight. Now, as we get up to midnight, temperatures will start cooling because we have a cold front coming in. Your forecast around 10 o'clock this evening, you're going to see temperatures dipping down into the 40s as we are going to be seeing 46 at 10 o'clock under partly cloudy skies. The cloud cover will be increasing. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour, and that chance of rain actually is best for us after midnight, between about midnight and 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So if you're going to be out and about early, keep that in mind. And we are going to be seeing cooler temperatures as well. I'll come back with your pinpoint seven day forecast here in just a few minutes. Jay Tatum. Daryl, thanks. The border town of Presidio is discussing a potential ban on hydraulic fracturing amidst environmental concerns. CBS 7's Matt Riss joins us now live from the community center there where a special council meeting for Presidio is underway. Matt, what are you learning? 
Jay Tatum, I'm joining you live from Presidio, just outside where this meeting is underway. I have my photographer inside. You're looking at a live look. This is a special city council meeting in Presidio to discuss a possible ordinance regulating fracking, a fracking ban within the city limits of Presidio. Now, this is something the mayor supports. Um, he said that you know water is very water quality is very important out here in Presidio, and that while this may be because there's not much oil and gas exploration nearby, this may be mostly um, you know something symbolic. Uh, this is something they're looking at addressing. Now, not too many people have shown up here. There's only about four people from the public. No one has said that um, they're going to be expressing anything when this item comes up. It's next on the agenda. There is an oil and gas industry expert uh, expected to speak against this ban on fracking here in Presidio. Coming up tonight at 10, we're going to dig deeper on this. A lot of eyes across Texas just looked to Denton, where they pushed through a fracking ban. So this ordinance is definitely grabbing some attention. We'll have more on this story coming up tonight at 10. And in Presidio, Matt Rist, back to you guys. Matt, thanks. Free citywide Wi-Fi is on its way to Kermit. It's a project spearheaded by the school district. Kermit ISD Curriculum Director Donna Price says up to 40% of students either don't have computers or internet access at home. That's why they're installing free citywide Wi-Fi. If we're able to provide Wi-Fi that enables them to use these high bandwidth type programs, then that's great. The district, by the way, is also investing in more laptops for every core class, as well as laptops that students can check out and take home to finish assignments. City officials are working together to make the streets of Odessa safer. Mayor David Turner tells CBS 7 that they have set new guidelines with law enforcement in the city, going 25 miles per hour over the speed limit, and racing can both be considered reckless driving. According to state law, reckless driving is a Class C misdemeanor, which means the driver can go to jail or be placed on probation. You know, we've lost two young people here in the last three months. Speed was a was part of the problem on both of those. We don't need to be losing our pe young people to speed. And if it means putting people in jail to get it to stop, then the city council is ready to put them in jail. Mayor Turner says he hopes this new measure will make people slow down. Do you know a Texas teenager hoping to make the world a better place? If you're an educator or a parent of a high school student who wants to make a positive impact, the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission has a unique opportunity. The commission is holding its annual video essay contest for high school students. This year's theme is creating a more just world. This week, a representative from the commission invited students at New Tech to enter the contest. New Tech sophomores will participate as part of a Holocaust studies unit in their world history class. I hope they understand that they may not be able to change the entire world, but they, uh, they can possibly change their, their, their part of the world. Uh, I'd like to see them be able to do that. Registration is open to any Texas high school student, and the deadline is March 13th. Cash prizes and scholarships will be awarded to winners. For more information on how to get involved, you can visit the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission's website or go to our website at cbs7.com. One oil company recently received a large check for their safety record and performance, and rather than splitting those checks among themselves, they decided to donate the funds to charity. CBS 7's Caitlin Crawford spent the day on one of Connelson Drilling's oil rigs to find out more. Caitlin? Today I'm here at one of Connelson's drilling rigs where employees are being very generous with the Christmas bonus they received that they told me they didn't believe they deserved. Well, I'm very proud of my guys. We, uh, we had a discussion. What happened was we had a, a little incident on the rig and uh, we decided to turn a negative into a positive. The drilling company received a $10,000 bonus check from Faskin Oil and Ranch for their safety record. But after a recent minor injury, they almost didn't receive that bonus. But they came up with a solution to turn the unfortunate event into a very positive thing for the community. I visited with my superiors and told them, you know, right here at Christmas time, these guys have been doing a great job all year. I didn't want to penalize them bottom hole bonus. So today they donated $5,000 to both the West Texas Food Bank and CASA. Like I said, man, kids are the future, so you know, we want them to have as, as good of a childhood as they can. The $5,000 donated to the West Texas Food Bank will provide 20,000 meals to families in need. And this one is especially um, just so touching because it came from the employees themselves. For them to give up a Christmas bonus to go to help people that unfortunately are not able to have food just means so much to us. Grab 
this is going to provide for the children that really need it the most. They're out there in the most stressful situation that they may have to live with. Now, Ken Nelson hopes that by sharing their story, others are encouraged to give during this holiday season. With your eye on West Texas, Caitlin Crawford, CBS 7 News. Caitlin, thanks very much. Coming up, the Sand Hills Rodeo is coming to town. We'll tell you what's new this year. Plus, could we see some rain in the basin this week? Here's a live look outside tonight. You take a look across West Texas. Weather Special's Daryl Ward has your complete seven day forecast coming up after the break. You're watching CBS 7 News, your eye on West Texas. Good evening. Welcome back to CBS 7. Thank you for being here. We have enjoyed a very mild day today, considering we are one week away from Christmas and just a couple, three days away from the start of winter. It's been nice up into the 60s, although we got a little more cloud cover coming in. Currently at Midland International, right now we are checking in at 59, the temperature after being up into the 60s. Winds east at 6 miles an hour, humidity 41%. Barometer is rising just a bit. And our pinpoint eye cam overlooking the city of Alpine right now with some cloud cover, but a very mild day being the rule all across the area and as we look back up to Odessa, the city of Odessa, nice evening also in the city as we have, like I said, enjoyed with the cloud covers some temperatures quite a way above average for most of us around here. And speaking of temperatures right now and around the area, we have 37 in Rodosa, 55 in Hobbs, 59 in Big Spring, 60 in San Angelo, 58 in Pecos, 57 in Fort Stockton, Marfa, 52, Alpine, 54, 61 in Presidio, our high today, 64, the overnight low, 39, average this time of year is 58 and 30, so we were above average on both ends of the day. No rain, but that could change, especially after midnight tonight. We have a trough of low pressure coming in. It's moving into New Mexico right now, right along through there. we got a cold front off to the north of us. Those two are going to come together right on top of us as we go through the nighttime hours with the moisture in place. We've got a shot at rain. Actually, it looks pretty decent after midnight, especially. Look at the sky forecast here. Now, around 10 o'clock this evening, we could see some showers starting in the western parts of the basin of the Trans-Pecos and watch as we go on into the midnight hour as a shot for rain is pretty much going to be north of I-10 along the I-20 corridor, but it's going to be moving eastward as we get into the early morning hours across the northern basin. And uh, so we got a shot at rain between about midnight and six, to be honest, is going to be the best chance because you see after that, you're going to see the clouds starting to break off to the east and that impetus for the rain moving away from us off further east into Texas and by tomorrow <laughs> afternoon clearing skies. Here is your pinpoint seven day forecast reflecting that. Now the cold front is going to bring us some colder weather tomorrow. Call it chilly 52 for your high on Friday. And then we rebound a little bit 58 on Saturday, 60 on Sunday. And by the way, the start of winter, the winter solstice 503 Sunday afternoon, if you want to be very precise. And of course, West Texas being what it is, look at that. The temperature will then go up on the first day of winter on Monday. Go figure. Christmas day looking nice too, by the way, up around 68, 70. Going to be a warm one. Expect to see a lot of people out throwing a football around on Christmas Day. Yeah, or kiddos can get out and play with their new toys. Yeah. yeah, and may have to do it in shorts, but still they're going to get a chance yeah, to get out there and nice enjoy a great day. Yeah, good. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Daryl. Still ahead, both the Odessa Police Department and Midland Fire Departments had reasons to celebrate today. We'll tell you all about it coming up after the break. You're watching CBS 7 News, your eye on West Texas. The department celebrated all 23 of this year's police recruits graduating from the Odessa Police Academy. This is the last class Lieutenant Ron Hughes will instruct. He has been heading the police academy for 33 years. Lieutenant Hughes is retiring from the police academy tomorrow with a 100% graduation rate. And congratulations to former CBS 7 photojournalist Oscar Rodriguez III on being one of the officers who was sworn into office this afternoon. 
Midland's new fire station is officially open. The official grand opening for the new facility at 4501 Sinclair Avenue was this afternoon. The department says that with the, an engine and ambulance on standby, Fire Station 10 will help cover highways as well as quickly the quickly growing area of Midland. Today we're standing in the bullseye target of uh, the best location uh, to serve the citizens of Midland from a fire station. The Midland Fire Department tells us Fire Station 10 has nine bedrooms, a library and a fitness room and will be staffed by five firefighters for now. If your child didn't get to get their wish list, uh, Christmas wish list to Santa on time, tonight only you can give him a call. You can call Santa from now until 9 p.m. Your child can talk to Mrs. Claus, an elf, or even Santa himself. There are two different lines, one in Spanish and one in English. You can see those numbers there on your screen. If you missed them, give them a call here and we'll pass those on to you. And the Odessa Jackalopes will have a teddy bear toss during their game this Saturday. Everyone attending the game is encouraged to bring a teddy bear to toss on the ice. You can pick up a new teddy bear at any Walgreens location. The bears will then be donated to help benefit West Texas children. Now we're giving away tickets to the game here at our studio at Music City Mall. All you have to do is come by our office with a teddy that you plan to throw on the ice and of course promise that you'll go to the game. You better hurry though. We only have a limited supply of tickets available and all of the teddy bears collected will go to Odessa Regional Medical Center as well as Rays of Hope in Midland. Marshall Hughes joins us now with a look at today's sports. I love the rodeo. I'm a big fan and today it feels like it's almost here. It really is. And every December we get ready for the rodeo. That's because it's in January. Coming up after the break, the Sand Hill Stock Show and Rodeo. It's coming to town. We're going to fill you in on a new event that should be a crowd pleaser. Plus, we're going to get you all caught up on DeMarco Murray's progress today. Now, it's not just the Cowboys who need him on the field, but fantasy football owners all around the country. We've got more on that straight ahead right here on CBS 7. We are 15 days away from the 82nd Sand Hill Stock Show and Rodeo. The national finals just wrapped up in Las Vegas. And just like every season, the Sand Hills Rodeo is the first pro rodeo of the new year. It all gets started January 2nd. It's going to go through January 10th. The Sand Hills Rodeo will have all of the same talent back from last year. You're going to see the bull riding, the mutton busting, but media coordinator Brooke Turner says the crowd favorite might be a brand new act that is coming to town. One thing that I'm really excited about is the Lonesome Dove Rodeo Company. They're actually bringing their mini bucking horses. So imagine a pony coming out bucking from the sh bucking chutes with a little kid on its back. So mutton busting taken to the next level. It's a great family event. It's something you can bring your kids to. Everybody has a good time with the clowns interact with the audience, interact with the kids, and uh, really try to make it, make it a lot of fun. I would say that, that uh, the draw for kids is our biggest draw. Ooh, taking a tumble right there. Mini bucking horses. How about that? I'll get started again. January 2nd. Now, a look at uh, what's new here. You got the Sand Hills Rodeo is going back to their 730 start time every night. And then the Christian Youth Night was moved from Wednesday to Thursday this year. That's going to be set for January 8th. And mutton busting, it's become <clears throat> so popular, excuse me, that the rodeo is holding preliminaries. You can sign your son or daughter up by December 27th. Get them on those sheeps. You can get calling the Sand Hills Rodeo Office to get going. Now, if you are among the fantasy football elite, your fantasy team is still alive. Now, for most fantasy football leagues, the championship round is Sunday, and a lot of you out there are going to be relying on DeMarco Murray. Murray is on 41% of fantasy football rosters who are in the finals. That's the highest of any player and good news. Murray was back on the practice field today. Now, although he did not announce that he would play Sunday, Murray was a limited participant in this morning's practice and he told the media that his hand felt good. Now, before the Cowboys take the field, we got some state title games to attend to. Class 2A Division 2 today. Albany was looking for its first championship since 1961, but Bremen gets the win 28 to 21 and Canadian up against Mason. The Canadian Wildcats destroyed them 34 to 7. They claim their third state title in school history. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us. Entertainment tonight. It's coming up next. You make it a great evening.